Okay. It says recording. It says recording. You guys can, everybody can see the screen. Yep. Awesome. Get into present mode so you can see it more clearly. Great. Okay. Loading. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Welcome. So glad you're all here and can make it. All right. So before we get started, we would like to hear from you. So please, in the chat, your name, district, and position. And if you would, please write your experience with empathy interviews. So are you waiting for an invitation? Are you getting the party started? Or are you an experienced party planner? So what the purpose of this is, is just to give a sense of who's in the room and what our collective experience and expertise is with empathy interviews. So waiting for an invitation is, um, haven't started yet, um, interested in it. Getting the party started, meaning maybe you are um, gonna be starting with the process of empathy interviews and you're about to learn more and you're, and then the other one is you've done empathy interviews before. So maybe you're not an experienced party planner and you're 100% confident, but you've planned the party before for empathy interviews. So if you would, please go ahead and put that in the chat. That way we can all benefit to see who's here. And it's cute. Anyone that says waiting for an invitation, you're invited. Yeah. <laughs> Great. All right. Fantastic. Most people are waiting for an invitation. This is great. Some people are getting the party started. So for those of you who have put in waiting for an invitation, um, what is your interest? Could we just have like one person maybe unmute themselves and just share what their interest is in empathy interviews? anyone or maybe put something in the chat. What is your interest? This helps us not feel alone in our virtual spaces as we're leading professional learning. <laughs> All right, Lisa doesn't know what empathy interviews are. She's heard the term, she's very interested. Great. Sheila says this is new to her and it's all new, wonderful. Um, for people who are getting the party started, is there anything that you think you need in particular that you would like to get out of this session? Please put that in the chat. chat. And for those who, if there's anybody who's experienced, which I don't think we have anyone, I would just love to hear like, what's so great about this process that you're finding so far? We have a lot of people of hoping there's something new. Oh, maybe as a behavior aid, it might help teachers and students hear other each other or students to hear each other. Yes, the listening is really important. Absolutely. Okay, are we ready for the next slide, Ms. Sharisa? We are. Thank you everybody for putting it. something in the chat. It's really, it's, it's, it's important for us to sort of build community around this. Go ahead, Sharisa. Okay, so here's how our time together will go. We'll start off with a why this session, kind of the history behind it, and why Jennifer and I are so passionate about empathy interviews. Um, and we'll start with exploring why empathy interviews are worthy, very worthy of our time and attention, and how they work, kind of the structure, and how they might be um, conducted. And then we have an opportunity to actually, um, to actually experience an empathy interview, we have a fishbowl from High Tech High that they conducted in uh, July of 2020, so that'll be great. And then we have 
two kind of two basic resources that we will you'll explore and walk out of with today. Um, one is resources for implementing empathy interviews in any context with any audience for any purpose. And then secondly, we're going to share with you some resources that we put together um, that would support implementing empathy interviews for the purpose of gathering information about the virtual learning experiences of students and teachers so we can try to improve that um, experience for them. And then we'll have a closing. All right. All right. And Jennifer, we, let's uh, start. We're going to start with the why. And I'm going to take that. So why are two ELA coordinators in a counselor's conference uh, <laughs> super excited about empathy interviews? Well, we've, we've known about empathy interviews for a few years, um, but I think the situation we're all in really brought out the uh, potential of them. So dis in December, we were at our statewide CISC ELA ELD uh, subcommittee meeting where people from all over the state come together. And the concern about the a huge number of D's and F's came up. And people said, so what can we do about this? So a, a subgroup was formed and Jennifer and I got to be part of the subgroup. And the subgroup, we got together and we said, well, you can't do anything about this. And what does it even mean that students are getting D's and F's? Because this was happening in our state and the country and beyond. So we felt we needed to go know what was going on to understand the virtual learning experience of our students and teachers so we could get underneath and and get their in, input on how we might improve the experience. So the group got together and uh, we put together a process and a set of empathy questions for gathering that information to find out what is going on. And that's a resource that we will share with you later and, and you will leave with. Um, and then two we, about two weeks ago, um, we even got more excited about empathy interviews. Oh, and by the way, this resource that we're sharing with you will be on a CDE website. We've been talking to districts around San Diego County, so we're excited. But then the uh, equity conference about two weeks ago, I hopefully got to attend, it was awesome. But there was a session, it was one of the last sessions where there were four educators, two from High Tech High, two from um, Escondido, I think they were principals, but they shared their powerful experiences with empathy interviews. And what they found out about their students and the students' virtual learning experience, um, one of the men was speaking, it brought him to tears. Um, so what was really cool is they are all part of the School Retool Fellowship, and you can look that up later, but this fellowship is where educators get together and they try out what they call small scrappy experiments, and if these experiments are effective, they take them to scale. So they had tried out empathy interviews as one of these small scrappy experiences, and um, just to hear what they found out and what they uncovered, um, we got even more excited about the uh, potential and the promise of empathy interviews. And we won't go into this, but we just want to share with you that in addition to empathy interviews, uh, these four educators also conducted um, student shadowing. So one of the gentlemen was sharing how he actually attended virtual classes with one of the students, did all the asynchronous work the student had to do, and that did an empathy interview with the student. And um, what he discovered was just really um, amazing and he needed to know, it, it, like I said, it, it brought him to tears. So then in addition, just this Monday, I was in a meeting uh, with San Diego County Office of Education and the subject of empathy interviews came up. We found out that Grossmont, do we have anyone from Grossmont here? You, do, you can just say, hey, in the chat. We found <laughs> out that in October, Grossmont was very um, concerned because kids weren't, weren't showing up for virtual classes. And they didn't, they wanted to know what was going on. So they were really brilliant and did interviews. They interviewed the students and found out it wasn't that they didn't like their courses or they just didn't want to go. Uh, what came up was a theme of how depressed they were. They were so depressed that they didn't want to show up or couldn't show up. And as horrible as that is to hear and upsetting as it is, we need to know. We need to know their stories. We need to know, uh, we need to take time to listen to what their experiences are, especially now coming up from a year of virtual learning. We need to hear our students and teachers stories so we can work to improve the virtual learning experience. But we're also going to talk about how you can use empathy interviews in any context and talk about, let's just get the party started. And Jennifer, do you wanna be the party director right now? I can, I'm ready to take that baton. <laughs> so what, um, what we'd like to do also in the spirit of community building, but just from benefiting from everybody that's here um, with us today around this topic, 
Um, and I think this is a great group because we are at the counselors um, network. Um, we're going to do something called a waterfall chat. So there's the question, why would you want to understand a person's thoughts, emotions, or motivations um, and do enough to, to schedule time to actually do an empathy interview? And what I'd like you to do is compose your response in the chat and you're gonna wait. And then what will happen is we're going to all hit send together and then you'll be able to read each other's responses. So think about, this is really just that, why an empathy interview? Why is this worth our time as a school to conduct something like this? And because you are all counselors, you might wanna think about, say, if you were talking to a teacher or to your administrator, and after this session, you, wanted, you were thinking that maybe you might wanna get this process started at your school. So remember, don't hit send yet. Compose your tweet length response. Okay. And hit send. And go ahead and read through what people said in the chat. And as I'm reading through the chat, I see a common thread around, I can't help you if I don't know you, if I don't understand you, if I don't know what you need. And as much as this probably makes sense to counselors in your field, it is amazing how this is a new innovation in the field of education on the teacher and administrator side. So the empathy interview process is really, um, it is a structured process and it's a very intentional process. And it exactly falls within that realm of what you guys have all brought up. We can't help you as a team if we don't understand what the challenges are, what the barriers are to your success at our school. And so the empathy interview process is a really good way for us to collect that qualitative information that we need to help. So um, what I'd like you to do is we're in a moment, we're going to read um, a little um, kind of it's like a one pager. Um, that kind of gives you a picture of why to do an empathy interview, but more importantly, some of the character, like some of the things to do when you're giving an interview. But before we get into that, and before I share the link, um, what I'd like you to think about is think about that interview process, a really good interview that you've seen. So this might be um, one that you've seen in one of your courses um, professionally or that you've had the, a chance to observe if you've shadowed someone or mentored someone while they're conducting an interview themselves. Um, it could even be when I talk to teachers about empathy interviews, I'm also finding myself starting to think about like Oprah, um, Donahue, Merv Griffin, if you're gonna age yourself like me, but a really good interviewer, there are certain traits um, and there's a certain way that that interviewer has um, about them. So picture what that interview looks like in your mind and what are some words that come to your mind as you're painting that picture? Would you put those in the chat? Okay. 
Yep. Insight, yes. Understanding, very good. Authentic, I think that is probably the most important one as well. Unbiased but probing, mm -hmm. genuine, present, engaged, leaning in, caring, interested, active, yes. Warm, yes. Exploring, yes. Flexible, right? Not stuck to your script. Absolutely. Thank you. Easy and truth seeking. Yes. And so it, empathy interviews definitely come across as the interviewer has a genuine desire and need to know from the interviewee um, and also is doing so in a way that really elevates their perspective and honors who that person is. I've put a link to a resource in the chat. It's also accessible from the slide deck if you were on there. Um, so you can just click on the picture. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And so what you'll see here is, it is the empathy interview one pager. So you'll see kind of the general flow in a graphic form, um, a brief statement about the why, and then also about the how. So I'm gonna be quiet and just let you um, take a look at this because after, in a moment, we're going to take a look at an example of um, an interview later on in this presentation. So these are the types of things that we will be looking for. All right, so Sharisa, are you ready? I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Oh, got to unmute. Okay, I'm going to share mine. I'm going to keep my video off just to. Okay, zip up here. All right. All right, now we have the opportunity to actually view a, uh, an empathy interview. And this empathy interview was done with high tech high educators in July of 2020. They're trying to understand the student virtual learning experience. So what happened was a, a, a high tech high teacher interviewed one of the students in front of 142 adults. So you have to give a lot of credit to the student that said, hey, yeah, I'll do that. I'll pour out my heart in front of 142 adults. Some of them teachers that I will have in the future, I have had. Um, so uh, the, the interviewee may not be representative of the students you support, but this is going to give us a common experience. We can get the, the flow of an empathy interview, the purpose, the moves that the interviewee makes. And you're going to have a link to this interview so you could use it later. And what we'll do is we'll watch the empathy interview between the student and teacher, but we'll look a little bit at the setup and a little bit of a debrief in case you wanted to replicate this yourself or if you wanted to conduct an um, empathy interview fishbowl at your site or your district. All right, so here are some questions that you might consider. And of course, anything else that pops into your mind while viewing. Um, what do you notice about that flow? It's interesting the flow, it says build rapport is kind of the third bullet. Well, ideally that build rapport happens before you even get on that flow, right? Um, but just notice what you what you notice about the flow. Um, 
the moves that the interviewer makes to create a safe space, and then be thinking about what might be challenging in an, an empathy interview. And let me take us there. Oh, I want to share my sound too. All right, I'm gonna go back. Um, all right, hopefully, there we go, share sound, okay, we're good. All right, everybody see that? Jennifer? Yep, it looks great. Okay, great. All right, let me show you in case you use this because you're going to have the link. Um, there's some marked places here that are pretty handy if you use this. If you look here, um, at the, the first dot will tell you about the, just the uh, rules, not the rules, it's the, it says rules, but goals and rules. I don't know that there are rules, but we're going to start here. If you start here. Action now. Um, Carol has invited a student to join us and they're going to do a, um, a mini empathy interview for us live right here. So while we're doing this, um, you have two jobs as an observer. And these are on page four. You can kind of capture some notes there. One is to think about how the interview, interviewer creates a space for the interviewee to share their story. So keep note if you see the ways that she is enacting the norms um, in this interview. And then the second lens for you is one of self-reflection. So think about as you're watching Carol conduct this interview, what moments might have been challenging for you as an interviewer? You might notice some ways of being in an empathy interview that are different from our normal ways of engaging. And sometimes that can feel uncomfortable or <laughs> tricky. And so um, keep an eye out for those moments as well. We'll have a chance to circle back and reflect together about these after the interview. So Carol, go ahead and take it away. Perfect. Um, as we get started here, I just wanted to share a little bit about why, why Aiden. Um, Aiden's on, on the improv team that I'm an advisor for at our school. Um, he's his, its current president and the focus that I have right now is connectedness online. And I noticed Aiden using tools that I did not know how to use to connect with his peers um, during spring distance learning. So um, his, his connectedness online with his peers is something I wanna, I wanna dig into and understand a little bit more right now. Aiden, you around? Yeah. Aiden, how's summer? Where are you? <laughs> uh, my summer's doing pretty good. I just finished um, a psychology class at Palomar with my friends. So we're staying uh, academically active. Nice. Cool. Um, how's everybody? How are your friends doing? How are you guys staying connected right now? Uh, everyone's doing pretty good. We play video games online a lot. Simply where a lot of my time's going. <laughs> and then now I, I've known you now for a couple of years. Like, what are you excited about for your senior year? Uh, well, <laughs> well, I know a lot of the senior year excitement comes from it gets taken away with distance learning, but I'm still excited to get into physics because that's something we haven't touched since freshman year. Cool. So that will be fun. I'm going to transition now into the interview. Um, Aiden, tell me about spring distance learning for you. How'd you feel about it? Um, definitely not great. But I think everyone was kind of, of course, everyone was new to it. And it was a struggle for a lot of people. Um, we spent a lot of the, because we had an hour a day of lecture time, kind of, where you were, you were sitting with your class and the teacher. But a lot of that time was spent with the, the staff trying to figure out how Zoom worked and how to give people um, admin privileges and how to mute and unmute students. So I spent a lot of the time just kind of sitting there waiting for instruction. And so uh, we ended up, you know, not really being focused on our classwork and kind of doing our own thing for a whole lot of the time we're supposed to be doing classwork because um, we, a lot of the staff didn't really know how to get everything set up. And how did that all make you feel? Uh, I feel I'm kind of in a privileged position because I have, I have a computer that works and I've been using my computer for a long time. So I, I know how to get my assignments done. I know that if, uh, my math teacher puts assignments on con, how I can, uh, get those done and how I can ask my friends for help. I know a lot of kids 
aren't that tech savvy. And so they, they really rely on the class time. And so I felt bad that a lot of kids weren't getting the help they needed because they didn't know how to do a lot of things on their own. And the, the period of class time was being taken up. Tell me um, about a time when you felt successful during distance learning. Um, I definitely felt successful when me and my friends, so we have um, an application called Discord, which allows us to communicate to each other on computer. And we've been using that for years before distance learning happened. And we realized that we were uh, asking for help and tutoring each other and giving each other critique on our assignments over Discord. And I, I had the, it was, it was kind of cool to see what we were originally used for, you know, communicating with each other while playing video games to this huge thing where we're, we have this huge network of students that can help each other outside of class and give critique. And, and I, I definitely been tutored um, in math um, with my friends online. So that was cool. What was it like to be tutored uh, online with, by your friends? I mean, it's hard not to goof off sometimes, but uh, one of my friends would just share their screen and they would have um, a drawing application on, sort of like how a Khan Academy video would work. And they just walk me through problems and it worked great. What is something, or how connected did you feel to your peers during distance learning time? Um, well, I felt connected with all my friends because we already had our network, but kids that weren't on Discord or kids that I could only see on Zoom, I definitely had no connection with at all. I, I didn't even talk to them. What about um, to your teachers? How connected did you feel to each of them during that time? Um, well, all my teachers offered we're, we're very open with offering more time if you needed it. So they would um, stay after class if you asked or if you emailed them to get one-on-one -on -one time. I personally didn't use a lot of that because I felt I was fairly, um, I was doing okay with the work. So I, I also didn't spend a lot of time with my teachers, which is very sad because I only really got half a year with uh, all my junior year teachers. What advice would you give to me about distance learning? Um, I would definitely say being really open to having for scheduling. I think a lot of kids had a lot of help with one-on-one uh, -on -one scheduling and office hours. Um, with everything being electronic, having a plate, like one place to go where everything can be found and like all the due dates and all the assignments. So I think like Google Classroom was really helpful. And if we didn't have something like that, I think kids who like didn't use a planner would be uh, in a lot of trouble. Suppose you could have three wishes to make distance learning in the fall the best it could possibly be. Um, what would your three wishes be? Um, well, one of them would definitely be to have uh, Google Classroom utilized more because I still think that is, it's, it's so easy to turn in assignments and to get them graded back and the teacher can write comments. So that was really easy. And I'm really glad we had that set up before we got into distance learning. Um, I also hope that lectures, when they have lectures, we, we do, we are engaged in stuff because when I took my psychology class, I found a lot of just the written instruction was fine. And then being able to then seek further help if you needed it was nice. And the, we weren't forced into like a, a mandatory kind of lecture thing even if the teacher didn't have a lot to give that day and it was just kind of work time. And then I guess I, I would really enjoy having more connection with teachers and classmates, but I'm not really sure how we do that. What advice would you give to an incoming student who hasn't done distance learning at our school yet? What would you, advice would you give to them? Uh, have a planner. <laughs> I remember the first few weeks I didn't and even and Google Classroom totally saved me with notifications and everything. Um, but I feel like having a planner is definitely very helpful being like writing things down physically was really nice to have because it's, it's like the one physical thing I had when everything else was digital and everything else was online. So I think have a planner and keep things kind of make, make yourself a schedule almost because finding the motivation is hard, but when you plan things out in advance, it's, it's a lot easier. So advisory at our school is meant for connection. What was advisory like during the spring distance learning for you? Um, it was 
it was fine. I was, there wasn't a lot of juniors in my advisory because over, over, we got kind of unlucky and a lot of our juniors ended up leaving. And so it was, <laughs> it was just me and one other junior. So, which was actually turned out to be kind of nice because then I, I, I talked to the seniors and got a lot of advice about the incoming senior year. And so I definitely got connected with other grades. And I think that's kind of the point of advisory is that you, you communicate and work with kids who aren't in your own grade. What kind of activities and advisory helped you communicate with the other students? Um, nothing. No, the time I actually talked to them the most is when we didn't have an activity and we were kind of just like left to discuss with each other or we were just put into, you know, groups and we just kind of talked. What is, um, how can teachers better connect with their students during distance learning? Uh, I still think, I mean, office hours is definitely nice. I came in one time just to talk with my biology teacher because I felt like I felt kind of bad not being able to talk to her at all. But that, that's kind of the, the tough one because with a teacher having so many students, it, I see how it's kind of hard to be able to really communicate with them. So I'm actually not too sure about how a, a staff member would get good contact with a student who maybe doesn't need as much help as another student. All right, what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause you right there. Um, you, normally, this could continue on, but because this is a, a, um, just a, a quick snippet of what this can look like, I wanted to leave some time also for us to debrief with um, Aiden, with Carol, and um, pose a few questions for you all also to talk about. So Aiden, what was that like for you to be interviewed by Carol? Um, fine. I feel like at high tech, we do a lot of kind of interviews. And we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one stuff. So it was nothing out of the ordinary. So it felt like kind of normal to you. <laughs> and I, I talked to Carol a lot, so it was easy. So do you think having that rapport with Carol in advance helps make an interview like this easier? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely having kind of like that relationship there. Because I feel like if it was a totally new teacher coming up to me and talking, it would be a bit more uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, Carol, I noticed in the beginning that you were asking a lot of follow-up questions and, and towards the end you were asking more of the like written questions and I'm, I'm, I was wondering um, like there's kind of a time crunch here. So I was wondering um, if you had more time, what's something that you heard from Aiden that you would want to follow up on more? I think that I, I mean Aiden talked about he didn't have many ideas um, for how to connect much more um, but I also know that with a little bit of questioning I feel like I could have gotten Aiden to talk about discord and all of the activities he and his friends have used to stay connected um, so I I probably would would have dug into his expertise on how he has a presence online and stays connected with his peers uh, a little bit more to see if I could learn anything there Awesome. There was a lot, Aiden, that you shared um, that has me thinking in different ways about how I'm approaching distance learning. Um, and so I really appreciate you taking the time to come connect with us. And I also, um, in this view, this gallery view, I can see a lot of folks um, in the group. And I noticed a lot of smiles, a lot of nods. Like um, I could see that people were really like connecting with you and your story. So um, usually an empathy interview, it, it really is just a one-on-one -on -one experience <laughs> and it, not uh, like a one-on-one -on -one experience with an audience of 142 people. So um, I want to appreciate you also for um, stepping up to share in front of such a big audience of folks. How did the interviewer, how did Carol create space for Aiden to share? All right. So, let me get back to, oh. Jennifer, um, do you want to put the PowerPoint back up? I can. Thank you. And share, oh, let me stop sharing. I did stop you sharing. You did stop sharing, yeah. <laughs> oh. All right. Thank you. All right. So now we'll have an opportunity to get into some breakout rooms 
um, and discuss um, what you're noticing, what you're wondering, what you're thinking. Um, so we have 30, uh, Jennifer, what about six rooms? That'll okay. Be about either. Do you want me to do it or do you, I can do it? Why don't you do that? And what I will do is I will put the um, questions in the chat. Okay. So we're going to have six rooms and um, everybody ready? And I think that we'll have, let's take, let me look at the time. Um, it's about five minutes. Okay. And then um, have fun in your breakout rooms and we will see you soon. Andy, are you there? Okay. I bet she stepped away for a moment. Yeah. Um, we are right on time, Sharissa. All right. I'm supposed to be done at 1.45, so that's pretty. Um, so I think when we come back, we might not have time for a whole group anything. But I don't that's, know. What do you think? I think that's fine. You know, I feel like the group is too big and anonymous that the whole group isn't really working. Yeah, yeah. So we'll just let them talk and connect um and then just jump right into the high tech high resources yeah and then into ours good it looks like we might have I mean, even if they have three minutes to look through them i think it's great yeah i think so too all right what'd you think of the interview i loved it no i loved it it was very typical very typical high tech you know high tech high um but, you know, I felt that it was so insightful. I mean, one of the things I was thinking of is, gosh, here is a here is somebody who is adept already at navigating learning. And if he is, and even talking about how he's not really having problems with the work, but he's still having difficulty, you know, he's like, oh no, I guess I do need to use my planner. I mean, just I'm just imagining what other students that don't have, haven't learned those skills yet, what they might be, what their challenges are. I would, because it just makes me want to hear another one from another student. Right. And you could see he wasn't happy trying to make the best of it. And he, and he said, I'm privileged, you know? They, yeah. But she said, what are you looking forward to in your senior year? He just laughed. <laughs> oh, I'm not. Sure. I know. Think about that, Sharissa. Every, an entire graduating class is missing their entire senior year. And the last and last year's missed half of them. Yeah. So that's it's not good. Yeah, those juniors, last year's juniors missed half of their junior year and all of their senior year. Yeah. Oh. Oh, she joined her group. Anyway, that's good. Yeah. That's good. That's great. Well, yeah. I think it's going well. <laughs> yeah. I think we we still have one more person on, but she's she, she's probably um. I don't see your picture though, which is weird. Yeah, um, we have a, a, I linked the survey in the last slide so we could put that in the chat too. Okay. Yeah, and I've got the high tech high resource link locked and ready to go. So when we get them, bring them back, well. Oh, okay, so when you come in, if you wanna click, just keep sharing your screen and um, click on that. I couldn't find the PowerPoint, so that's why I asked you. Oh, okay. <laughs> That is a okay. Yeah, if you want to just click on the link, I'll just tell you where to scroll to. Okay. To the next one. Sounds good. Oh, I guess I closed my window by mistake. Let me reopen that. So this is being recorded. <laughs> oh, it is. That's great. Maybe we should pause the recording. Boarding. All right. All right. Welcome back. And um, 
All right, share my screen. All right, I'm sharing my screen. Um, so now we are to the point. Oh, just I wish we could. I wish we could see your faces and talk. But did, I hope everyone enjoyed that the empathy interview. And it's a, it's a great resource. And you know you could conduct a fishbowl, but it just hope you enjoyed that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is share um, a resource, and this resource will um, support you in implementing um, empathy interviews for any context, uh, for any for any purpose, for any audience. Um, a little bit of background about this. This is from High Tech High. Um, this is their uh, improvement team projects. If you go to their website, they have a bunch of them and they share freely. Uh, but what happens is the, the teachers in the High Tech High induction program uh, participate in the creation of a, a uh, change idea to address an issue. And they go through a plan, do, study, act cycle, and then they um, they document their findings and their research. So it's, we benefit, we can use them. So this change package, as they call it, um, is around empathy interviews. What I, I find interesting is this, this change idea seems to be focused on using empathy interviews in the classrooms, particularly for addressing behavioral um, issues or challenges, but teachers could use empathy interviews as a tool to find out all kinds of information. I think maybe they should be used regularly. But what, what's great about this too, is it's not just about using empathy interviews in the classrooms, but it's also about teaching empathy. The um, gives some great resources for why you'd want to teach empathy, how it, it, its impact on the culture, the community, but also how it prepares students for life and how it impacts academics. So great resource. Just let me show you a few of the um, highlights. So here down at the bottom, you'll find out this is the steps that the um, experimenter used in this activity. So it gives you some background there and how you can replicate it or you know do something similar. And again, this is empathy interviews in the classroom, but you could use this to, um, to conduct empathy interviews, implement them for any, to find out any type of information. And then tips and tricks from the person who conducted the activity, kind of um, you know, notes from the field. And this is cool, kind of cool. This is their evidence, some of the evidence that they collected. And what you'll find is three different um, transcripts of empathy interviews with students. So these could be used in lieu of a video or in combination with the video to get a sense of the flow, uh, the questions that are asked and the type of information that they uncovered. And then this tab is awesome. Great resources for why empathy interviews are important, how to use them, um, why it's important to teach empathy interviews. So great resources here. I just wanna note that this video example is not the one that we use. This is just a little two minute and you could use it. I think you might find the one that we use more beneficial, but it's there. So completely up to you. And I think I have a little time. So let's take three minutes to come back at 1.50. Um, for you to just go ahead and look at whatever you'd like to in here. Go ahead and just explore for about three minutes. And Jennifer, the link is in the chat, right? Yes. Okay. The link and on the slide. Put, so yeah, the link is in the chat. So have fun and I will be quiet. And Sharisa, you'll need to stop sharing your screen for the next one. And then I'll okay. bring mine up during this three minute time. I'll just stop now. Also, as you're perusing, if something looks really good, feel free to share it in the chat, either just maybe just by naming it or adding a link to it, just so others can kind of see how you're, what you're finding valuable.
All right, everybody ready? Come back, share more. And uh, Jennifer, I put a link in the chat to the resource that you are sharing. Excellent. And also all these resources are also linked onto the PowerPoint. So you've got them in two places. So when Charissa mentioned a group that she and I joined um, a few months ago, um, this was the work group and this was our product. So we joined with a few other coordinators um, throughout the state of California and we formed the CISC ELA ELD Empathy Interview Work Group. And we um, wanted to provide information and some sample interview questions. And then the third thing that we provided was a survey that we think would be amazing if anybody actually used these questions, if they um, wanted to participate in the survey, then we could all kind of get a sense of what's happening across the state. But survey or no survey, this is what we, um, we created. So again, in the spirit of, of empathy interviews, our guiding question was what additional information do we need and what might we do with that, that information to best support all students in transitioning student performance to, from striving to thriving at the present and the future. So this is in response to the pandemic and these empathy interviews were created um, to help get more information about what do they need? Again, going back to what this group uncovered before, what do you need? And then how can we support you in meeting those needs? So we've, um, we've got this memo that has a lot of information and it is intended to sort of stand alone. Um, so what you've got is kind of a rationale in the, the memo, we've got directions, but then we also have the questions themselves. So let's take a look at those. And there are only five, um, they are all open-ended and they were also tested by somebody who was on our committee. So again, you know, this is the interviewer asking the student, tell me a little bit about yourself. Think about a time when you felt best about school. When was it? Um, what, how has COVID-19 affected you and your family household? So this is beyond school question. Um, how have your teachers or school provided support that has been helpful for you socially and or academically? So this is um, kind of leaning into some of the things that we're already doing well. And then what would you like your teachers to know about what students need right now? So these could be great um, questions just to begin with. We have very, very similar questions for the teachers. So we were kind of thinking that during these times, we need to hear from all staff. And these questions I think could also be um, tailored to other types of staff members at the school site. This is the survey and um, <laughs> I don't know if anyone's used it, but it would just be great just to hear from your story. You know, so many times we create things and they go out there in the world. And so this is, was our attempt to kind of make it a two-way um, feedback loop. So um, I'm going to just give you a minute just to, you've made a copy so you can, um, again, this is like a Creative Commons. You can use it, adapt it, change it. I'm going to give you a chance to look at it. Jennifer, I would add too that down at the very bottom are links to the video that, that we shared, um, links to the one page that you shared earlier. And that it says quick article, that's not quick article, that's the resource that I just shared, so. Yeah, so again, they're all here. So not only on the slide deck, but we've got them all here for you too off, off of the memo. And I know sometimes it feels awkward to have the silence, but we're all busy. And it's nice just to have time to just check things out for yourself without somebody interrupting you like I am right now.
Okay, so there's not that much to explore in that resource. So I think that we're gonna go ahead and move on. So we have two asks before you leave us today. The first is in the chat, please tell us one thing that you are taking with you from today's session. Great, thank you, Phyllis Meredith. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Marjorie. Sharissa, looks like we did pretty good on the resource sharing. <laughs> good, some ideas for implementation, great. We, we'd love to hear how it goes. Um, you have our contact information. We, we let us know if we can do anything to support you in this. That's wonderful. Good. And also resources to share. And absolutely, feel free to use our PowerPoint as your starting place and um, build from it if you find yourself having a need to present this idea to others and to share the resources. If um, you're going to support a team or if you're going to lead an empathy interview process yourselves. Empathy interviews you, you can do by yourself, um, but it's much more impactful um, to do this process, to plan this process, to think this process through, and also to look at the results from this process with a team. Okay, so now the very, very last thing is we have a survey. So if you could please click on that link and take the survey. Before you leave, and thank you for sharing your afternoon with us. Yeah. Everyone have a great rest of the day and a great rest of the week. Yeah. Great. Goodbye, everyone. Take care. Okay. Jennifer, you want to stop recording? Yes. Are you